Here we're going to finish the wine bottle and put our own finishing touches on the wine bottle. Um, but first we have to make sure we have all of what we need uh, as far as the reflections and the label and all those things done first. I'm going to add to the reflection to take that hard edge off of the center of the bottle on the reflection that you see now. And I'm going to put a color that's close to, uh, kind of in between the darkest color green and that whitish green that I have on there now in order to blend them together a little better. So I'm going to go right down that, uh, that line that's close to the center of the bottle with this medium color green. It's a soft color. And it is a combination of cad yellow, phthalo blue, unbleached titanium, and a little bit of white. So that's what we're mixing together here. And then I'm just going to put a very narrow curved stroke going vertically down the bottle. The neck of the bottle is the most narrow part. And then I'm going to thicken it up a little bit on the round top part of the bottle to follow the shape of the bottle. So the reflection is going to reflect the shape of the bottle as well. So you see where I'm extending that part a little bit more. And then when we get done with this reflection, it's going to be a lot more realistic. I didn't want to overwhelm you with spending too much time on the reflection before finishing the bottle. So if you're like me, you like a little bit of that instant gratification and see what it's going to look like first. And then I'm barely, barely touching with like a makeup tight pressure um, on the left side just to give it a little bit of uh, some refractory light on the left side going into the cad yellow without rinsing my brush and again the color is even uh, darker because I'm adding more phthalo blue and I'm going to try to get a little closer to that darkest color. So again, I'm going to do the same thing and go darker yet. And just a very little bit of a short sort of curved stroke. Following that last line of reflection that I, that I just finished with. So it goes from the very lightest to more of a medium green and then a darker green. So I'm kind of blending them together a little bit and I don't want to cover the entire bottle. I don't want to go all the way to the edge um, of the bottle and get rid of that very very dark color. I want to keep that in there so that these just show the reflection of the light. Okay so I'm just touching up part to bring some of that dark part back and with blending sometimes you have have to do a little bit of back and forth so I'm making sure that I'm putting that dark darkest part of the bottle back so that I can keep it and blending it in toward the reflection and evenly but I don't want that straight up and down line so that's why I'm making those little strokes the line going down is is straight down, but it doesn't have a hard edge. It has a nice soft edge to it. Very light brush strokes, lightly like you're putting a, a makeup on. So I'm just evening up a little bit, fixing whatever little bumps I have on the outside of the bottle. And it looks okay. Now, it looks like a painting. It doesn't look like a photograph, but it is good enough for me. 
you don't want to just try to get rid of your style and uh and just be like a photograph because you know you could just take a photograph and make a print but we're, we want this to be a painting so don't get too concerned over perfection I took some of that titanium white and I want to brighten up those brightest parts of the reflection that's as if a light bulb is hitting the bottle so that titanium white straight straight out of the tube um, just hitting it very lightly in certain spots to reflect that that's where that strong light is hitting the bottle don't get carried away don't make it too wide keep it keep it narrow and my biggest dot of that is toward the top of that bottle because that's that's facing the ceiling okay so it, it kind of came together and I'm pleased with it and I'm going to touch up that cork bring that out so I'm using some unbleached titanium and I'm coming down to have a highlight there to bring it out and then after I do that I'm going to go into some burnt, burnt sienna and I'm going to take the corner of the brush and make some little dots of burnt sienna in that cork for the cork effect and then I'm going to very very light touch smear that going down with the brush and then it really does look like a cork it really does look like one so just a tiny bit of burnt sienna just on the corner after I get done um, highlighting this cork on the corner of the brush I meant Anyway, so if, if you didn't see the beginning and you're just starting to watch, my name is Angie Green. I am with the group Painting with Fibromyalgia on Facebook. And this channel also coincides because most of the people that are in the group need to paint in a looser, more relaxed fashion. And we do... Uh, videos together we do painting together in that way that encourages uh, having less pain while you're painting and in that way painting can be more therapeutic because it could take uh, your mind off of any kind of physical pain that you're that you're um, enduring it could uh, make you concentrate more on the painting and the gratification that you're getting out of that so it gives you a little bit of a break unless you stiffen up and forget to relax and get so into it that you're not paying attention to your body um, that could be a problem so we try to prevent that when we paint together most of our painting is live so it's very energetic and there's a lot of um, chat and laughter some people are painting some people are just sitting it out and going to paint later but there's a lot of energy that comes with doing these live so if you haven't experienced that you have to sign directly into youtube don't go through the facebook link if you see a facebook link go directly into youtube because when you join in and have a discussion and ask questions and and laugh at the bloopers and all that it makes the experience so much more fun so I invite you to do that YouTube is for everyone my channel is for everyone not just people experiencing pain or fibromyalgia the group on Facebook is for just those who experience chronic pain and or fibromyalgia um, but the Facebook channel please subscribe and hit that little reminder bell and that way you'll know when I'm on subscribing does not obligate you to anything it just tells YouTube 
that you think it's a quality channel. So watch an entire video, see how you like it, and then um, subscribe and hit that little reminder bell because I might be having something that you'll really enjoy watching or painting along with. So I'm probably done working that um, cork. Now I have a damp paper towel and I have it uh, squeezed out, a little bit of water on it, so that if I have make a little mistake and go outside the lines, I can uh, swipe that off immediately. Uh, if you wait too long, if you wait just seconds too long, you're not going to be able to take it off and fix your mistake. But if you keep that handy, you could fix that right away. You could either use a corner of a paper towel if you're careful, or you can use a clean brush dipped in water and wiped off. Um, but that takes a few strokes to do that. And you might have to just practice doing that to, to get the hang of that. But I think a paper towel works just as good. So right now I'm showing my round brush and my round brush is, it's a very small round brush and I'm going to use that to put whatever design that I'm going to place on my label. But first I'm dipping into the titanium white and I'm going to highlight the edges of the label to, to really make it look like a label. So I'm going to highlight that right now. Very and I'm going to use that same brush, because it's more the size for detail, to put the rest of the details on my label. I'm going to really personalize mine. Um, my name happens to be a color name, <laughs> green. So I'm taking advantage of that. And I'm going to put on my label, Green Vineyard. So, and I'm going to try to get grape leaves on that bottle. <laughs> I think they look like grape leaves. Uh, grape leaves can look like trees very easily. So you can personalize your, your uh, wine label however you would like to. Okay, so have fun with it. You can just you know, go all out or you can keep it plain and simple. Mine's going to be on the simple side. But you can use that uh, small round brush for kind of scroll work. Uh, you can, I actually wrote with mine, so, but it's not easy. And if you know how to uh, wet it and dip into the paint and then roll it onto the palette paper, you want to roll it uh, to get that brush part skinny. And if you watch carefully, you'll see me do that. And then you can use it for fine lines. But that's something else that might take a little bit of practice. So what you can do is practice your brush strokes um, on the side before actually doing it on the painting, just to see how much pressure that you need um, for the canvas. Try to relax. Try to take breaks, roll your shoulders backward and forward because this is more detailed work and this is the type of thing that um, you can get a little too tensed with and then it will affect you immediately after you're finished. <laughs> so try to be try to be relaxed. You know, take a sip of whatever cold drink or coffee or whatever. Um, don't don't worry too much. And the way you can not worry too much is um, have a little water bottle there to spray your uh, palette. And uh, it will have more patience with you. <laughs> so you won't feel so rushed and you won't get uh, so tense. I am speaking in a way that... Um, beginner beginners can follow me, but many people in the group are actually already artists or professional artists. We have people of all levels that follow. We paint together not because we uh, 
need to, but not because we need to skill-wise necessarily, but we need to paint together as an extra way of supporting each other. Our group is for painting and it's also for support for those who have chronic pain that paint. But painting together is a way of um, sharing an experience and being able to enjoy the accomplishments of following through with our painting, even though we have chronic pain. That doesn't mean if you're having a flare that you have to paint and push through, but if you're up to painting, it's a good way to paint together and not alone because you feel the support as you paint. And then if you're chatting, uh, if you have a question, you could look at the chat and we're, we're, um, we're helping each other out. Okay. So, um, so I really hope that you can join us live sometime and experience that. If you have pain or not, you will really find something special. When I get done with this part, I'm going to be blending some purples, um, purples by combining the co colors of phthalo blue and quinacridone magenta and titanium white together. Um, so different amounts of those colors for the different shades of purple. And sometimes I'll have more blue. I'm going to be just blending those on the canvas. I'll, I'll mix some of them on the palette and then blend them on the canvas. I ended up also adding, after those were dry, some yellow ochre, um, just with a thin, very thin amount. I'd wipe my brush off and scumble that in because I did not like the turquoisey look of the blue. So I toned it down with the yellow ochre and I really liked how that worked. So I'm going to play music for you and you enjoy that. And now that I've talked you through the painting, you'll get to see um, what you can do when you do yours. Enjoy. You have the one long one at the top and the two at the sides. And they have exaggerated curves to them. So I'm just doing that. This side. 